We are awake, the woman replied, still holding the door to the width of her body. Is this the house of Don Juan de Leon? The woman nodded. Consuelo swallowed. The next sentence would doom or save her. I am a woman with a good heart, and I seek his advice. She tagged on the second part as the first seemed too odd to leave hanging. The woman's eyebrows shot up. Indeed. Consuelo felt her brow tighten. I am not a beggar. I try to be a good person. The woman sl smiled slightly and opened the door wider. Come in. Consuelo entered the foyer, and the woman shut and locked the door behind her. What's your name? Maria de Consuelo Costa Agenta. Senorita Costa, welcome. Granddaughter of Rosa and Emilio Agenta? The smile on the woman's face was genuine. You knew my grandparents? I never met my grandfather. He was dead long before I was born. But my grandmother Rosa lived until I was 10. I am Susana Perez de Leon, and Juan de Leon is my father-in-law. You met my daughter, Marcela. I did know your grandmother, though only briefly. My father-in-law knew her well. And your mother, Layla, right? Consuelo nodded, surprised. Yes, my father-in-law knew her too. Is she still living? Barely, Consuelo answered quietly. Susana nodded. Well, if that's your card, you must bring it around to the back of the house and tie your horse up in the back in the courtyard. We cannot have it out front, and no one in our household is available to help you. Consuelo looked at around at the fine furnishings. The room she had been led to had the long, high windows of a city home and a, rug, a rich, thick rug on the floor. The drapes, in similar red and gold tones as the rug, hung heavily next to the windows, and the seats in gold and green leather were amply padded. How was it that no servant had answered the door? No groom was able to stable her horse, and yet they could live in such sumptuous surroundings. Susana watched her closely. You don't know, do you? I'm not sure if I do or I do not. Susana raised her eyebrows again, and Consuelo felt her heart skip. She had answered wrong, missing the cue. At least you're honest, Susana said at last. It's the Sabbath. We do not work on the Sabbath, and we dismiss our servants for the day so they cannot be held to that knowledge. You do not keep the Sabbath holy, I take it? I do nothing overtly, and only lit the candles for my mother when she asked, but it is for her that I'm here. Well, it's late enough that the neighbors are about and will suspect that the lady of quality is seen stabling her own horse. I will call my husband. A mission of mercy trumps the careful observance of law. Thank you, thank you, she said to Susanna's retreating form. When she returned, she had a tray with cups, pastries, and an olla of chocolate. I will not serve you, so help yourself. Consuelo took a cup from the tray and poured chocolate from the rustic corral. She smelled the cinnamon and spice fragrance and sipped gratefully at the thick brown liquid. She reached for a pastry. Dip it in the syrup, Susanna said. It has honey and lemon and mint to soothe your nerves. The sweet pastry had been fried in oil and was crisp on the outside with, melting, with a meltingly creamy interior center. The sweet syrup made for a rich confection and Consuelo took another. Susanna nodded, then turned her head as two men entered the room. Then she stood up and looked meaningfully at Consuelo. Still holding the dip, dripping pastry, Consuelo rose. The men did not bow or acknowledge her. The older man with a gray pointed beard and short hair looked at Susana. Is this she? Yes, Father, Susana said. She is Consuelo Costa Agenda, daughter of Leila, granddaughter of Rosa. Consuelo, she added, turning to her. This is Don Juan de Leon and my husband, his son, Jose Luis. Jose Luis was thin and also wore a beard. His black one, his, his was black with one or two great streaks of gray beginning to show. He glanced quickly at her, and Consuelo thought she saw amusement and intelligence in his gray eyes before he looked back at his father. Neither man looked at her directly. What does she want? Shelter, it seems, and something more. We were just getting to it. If you please, Consuelo began. Susana raised her hand to stop her. They will not address a strange woman unless they are certain that she is not unclean. Consuelo blushed and shook her head. I will see to her comfort, Father, but you and Jose Luis must inquire of her mission. Don Juan cocked his head. Are you in command? Susana shrugged. I just think it would be more efficient if those who can help her hear it from the person who needs it. Don Juan turned to his son. See to it that Senorita Costa is given whatever she needs. 
Susanna, I will go to my study now. Certainly, Father, you will not be disturbed. Don Juan turned and left the room without once acknowledging Consuelo. He is the keeper of our people's knowledge, Susanna said, sitting down again. He has received the traveling rabbi and now must learn and remember everything he was taught so as to teach it to us all. He, we, we are apparently very ignorant in our language and customs. Our prayers are wrong from so much time away from any source and our habits shoddy and imprecise. Her voice held a trace of surprising bitterness. My wife is not guarded in her speech, was at least said, sitting down as well. Consuelo followed suit. But she has learned it at a level that I cannot hope to achieve, and so is permitted a loose tongue. If I am not to be learned, who will teach our daughter? And if we have no sons, who will carry the words of the rabbis forward, if not she? And if she does not teach her children, who will?